this is what I would like to talk about in particular is the risk model that Chinese banks have and which we believe have uh, offered them a massive advantage over uh, Western banks. Um, typically when a bank looks at a loan, and this is a private commercial bank, it looks at a number of factors. Investing or lending into Africa will Im imply, first of all, looking at a country limit or a country risk. That's pretty much driven by the rating agency's view on a country's macroeconomic and political conditions. The second one, uh, the risk factor, is of course performance risk. Uh, and if we look at uh, a concrete ex example of this would be a mining project. Can the uh, operator of that mine actually deliver, get the stuff out of the ground? And the third one is the credit risk. The borrower of the loan, is it in a position to repay that loan? Well, on all these fronts, Western banks looking at a project in Africa will fall down pretty early in the process because uh, they've got very limited country limits unless uh, it is in their strategy to actually um, expose themselves to emerging markets. And I'll uh, highlight two particular Western banks that we think are an exception to the rule. But for the most part, the Western banks will not get past the country limit. They've got very limited funds available for investment in emerging markets in Africa in particular. The second one is performance risk. They're not necessarily f familiar with the companies. The only ones that are, that are reasonably comfort comfortable with would be the ones that have already extend, performed for quite some time, and that would be companies such as Sonangol, for instance, or the Ghana Cocoa Board. The third one is the cre credit risk of the borrower or the counterparty. Um, in terms of a project, for instance, a mining project, uh, the bank has to be comfortable that there are off-takers of this particular pro product. Um, in the case of Africa, if you look at a copper mining project, for instance, chances are the off-taker is a Chinese company. Western banks do not necessarily have the knowledge of that customer to determine their credit worthiness. In, on all of these fronts, the Chinese have the advantage. The Chinese banks, for instance, will have a much larger appetite for country risk because of the political incentive to do so. The second thing is a lot of these projects in Africa are done by Chinese companies. Uh, Chinese companies always, almost always perform. They deliver ahead of time or on time. And the third aspect is the off-taker is Chinese with whom the Chinese bank is probably very familiar with. Now, there's a, a bit of a missing link here. Chinese banks have all these advantages, but can they just go into Africa? And we say, no, there's, there's still a couple of obstacles that you face. You don't have um, any knowledge of the local market. You're not particularly familiar with the, with the political um, and or legal uh, background of that particular country. This is where countries with uh, linguistic or cultural links to Africa have a particular advantage, and I would probably urge a lot of Brazilian banks to take note of this. Um, the links that you have, to linguistic and cultural links to, Af to Africa and countries in Africa, give a massive advantage in order to get access to the databases and knowledge of the local customers. Chinese banks do not have this, so they were forced or are for us probably to work with African banks in order to establish those links in the database. I'm gonna look at particular ICBC's investment in Standard Bank for $5.5 billion. Um, the idea is of course that uh, Standard Bank would gain access in the Chinese market. The jury is still very much out on whether that is working out to plan. The second aspect, though, is that ICBC will gain access to Africa. So far, uh, the, you know, the, the pipeline apparently consists of 65 big projects, the first of which, or the most significant of which, has been the Marupule um, power utility development on Bot in Botswana. Again, I would come back to my risk model here. The supplier of equipment for the power plant is Chinese. Um, this offers a great boon for Standard Bank because they've got a partner who's familiar with the uh, uh, party supplying the equipment, so minimizing the performance risk. 
Botswana, of course, is also probably one of the highest ranked African countries uh, by Standard and Poor and Fitch. So the sovereign rating makes it quite comfortable and the, the credit risk is reduced. Hannah's already uh, indicated that China Exim Bank and China Development Bank are uh, at the moment the pre eminent players in terms of pre-export finance, trade finance, and project finance. We expect that to change. We also expect uh, Chinese banks to participate more in project and uh, trade finance in particular. Why do we say that? Well, it depends on the, the, the level of investment by Chinese uh, corporations in, in Africa and what will be the future of that. Is it just going to be commodity extraction? Well, if it is just commodity extraction, it's going to be for quite some time because China will need Africa's commodities for quite some time to come. That in itself will lead to uh, uh, great opportunities for Chinese banks, particularly in the trade and project finance as well as advisory areas if they can have the opportunity to uh, couple or cooperate with African banks. But if the investment becomes more significant and you actually have investment by Chinese corporations in manufacturing, uh, in the manufacturing area, then you have a greater opportunity for Chinese banks to actually expand their corporate base, corporate lending base, and by extension retail banking to go to individual customers. Because if China really invests in manufacturing, in light manufacturing in, in Africa, that will indicate that it expands the, the longevity and the durability of the investment for so much longer. As we've said, we believe that retail banking presences by Chinese banks in the future is not something that uh, is fanciful. It is a, a great possibility. For the immediate future, we think that Chinese banks will concentrate on cooperative ventures and investment in African banks. Two particular areas that I would like to focus on, South Africa, already we have an investment by ICBC and Standard Bank. Um, the China Construction Bank has a cooperative agreement with First Rand Bank, which is another one of the big four in South Africa. That is a MOU and a cooperative agreement at the moment. We do not, we would not be surprised if that translates into an actual investment in First Rand. China Construction Bank has also, a couple of years ago, formed a joint venture uh, with uh, some prominent South African individuals to form a company called Rand Asia. Rand Asia focuses particular on trade finance and it's built up quite a significant market share. We think this kind of pattern, forming particular niche finance areas, is one of the areas that Chinese banks will focus on. The other region that I would just like to highlight is Nigeria. Nigeria in 2006 and uh, later on 2009 reorganized its banking sector uh, considerably. First of all, it had a recapitalization of the banking sector. Then there was a crisis. A number of CEOs got fired. Um, the central bank in Nigeria has reduced the number of banks. It's split up. It's introduced a number of new regulations, all of which make Nigerian banks uh, a particular particularly attractive target uh, for Chinese banks and given the extent of investment by China and Nigeria and the, the rate of trade, we think it is an, a distinct possibility that we may see some merger and acquisition activity in this area over the next year or two. Thank you very much.